I, I guess first with uh, Isaac and his experience, um, but that's two summers in a row he's been able to get something extra to grow. Um, what's How beneficial is that for one of your best players? Um, I think it does wonders for him on a personal level, uh, obviously going out there and being able to compete with the best guys in the world his age um, and to be with a team that has the success that they did. Really only had one kind of close game, and that was the championship where Molly got on him a little bit early. But um, great experience for him, something I'm sure he'll remember for the rest of his life. But further than that, it's good for our program, the exposure that we're able to get and you know, to for other kids to be able to see that there's, there's even more things you can do um, through Oklahoma State from a basketball standpoint. So really proud of him, happy for him that he won, but I'm certainly glad to have him back here. You manage him a little bit different because he has a he had a pretty good workload, right? Yeah, yeah. We uh, basically shut him down here for a couple weeks. I mean, he's chomping at the bit. He landed, I think he landed in Oklahoma City that Monday night at like 11:30, and I told him specifically not to come to the gym the next day. But he's a great teammate. He missed his guys, and so I got up here to work out at six the next morning. He was already in there. So this kind of shows you. Maybe it's a combination of his body clock kind of being off, too. I think he might have thought it was like 6 p.m. instead. Um, but, you know, his presence uh, is, it means a ton to us. You can tell his energy is infectious, and he'll be a great leader for us. When he was competing in Grace, um, did, you watch, did you keep up with him watching the games here? How did you keep up with what he was doing? Yeah, I watched every game. Uh, the first few on the FIBA YouTube channel, and then the last few on the ESPN Plus deal. So um, I was tuned in. I was... You know, I wasn't necessarily coaching him, but, but trying to encourage him. Uh, Coach Weber did a tremendous job, him and his staff, with uh, Mike Hopkins and LaBelle Moen from NC Central. Uh, did a great job leading the team, and that's a hard job to do, I would imagine. Get all those highly talented kids basically in a two-week span and take them to play against guys who, I mean, those, those clubs play together all year. You know, so they were playing against guys who were comfortable with one another. So. Kudos to the staff to, for putting the kids in a position to have success. But I was tuned in for every game. This have wasn't his first time with an experience like this. How did you see his play kind of translate when he came back here, maybe growth-wise for him with his game? Well, he hasn't played here yet. Uh, we haven't put him on the court for anything. Um, you know, again, he's he's around all the time, but we've, we've kind of taken a little bit off him physically um, since he's been back. And, you know, we know he got a lot of work in the last four, five, six weeks, um, and now just need to let him rest and recover. Because, you know, I don't know how much I need him in July, but I know I'm going to need him in January. Having him <laughs> over there, how much does this help elevate your recruiting expect moving forward? Getting new guys coming to this program, and knowing that you have national exposure, international exposure as well. Yeah, I mean, I guess there may be a, a little bit of a bump there. We're pretty aggressive recruiting around here. Um, and we'll continue to be. Um, we had an international guy here before he left, so it's, uh, <laughs> um, it may help in terms of some of the perception of things that you can do from our program, um, but we'll continue to be really aggressive in that area. I just had a really good freshman season, um, but did you see him grow any while you were watching him play? you see his game improve? Yeah, I, I think the kind of there's a dichotomy with with a team like that, the way it's constructed. So you got some really talented high school kids, and then you got three or four guys who've been through a college basketball season. And, and as a coach, I can tell the difference between the two and how they approach the game. Um, and, and I would imagine that Coach Weber probably was able to maybe lean on ice a little bit more, considering that he understands how to process scout reports, how to game plan, how to prepare, at least from the mental side. Uh, and obviously those other guys are really talented, but don't have the experience and compete against high level competition every single time you're out. So I think that helped him be a value to that team. And then his experience going to have a success in that environment, certainly going to help him as he's back with us now. How has summer here been going, especially with those new faces? Um, I'm really pleased with where we are. Um, we've, got, um, we've got a good mix. Obviously got some really talented freshmen but we also have some veterans who are chomping at the bit to have a really successful season. Uh, so finding that balance, uh, we're back to having a competitive environment every day where guys are getting pushed and becoming better because of it. Uh, so I'm really excited. It kind of helps for me to just let them go out there and you know, figure things out a little bit more than uh, necessarily trying to manufacture everything. What are you seeing out of the Boone Twins so far? 
Uh, they've been tremendous. Um, they came in here. They, they're eager to learn. They've been great teammates. Uh, I think they're leaning on the older guys to try to help them through. But when it's time to compete, they compete just as hard as everybody else. Uh, I mean, they expect to be able to be contributors to our team this year, and I hope they are. <laughs> Coach, who from the freshman class has stepped up as a leader so far? I, I don't know if they know necessarily how to lead. You know, it's one of the things that struck me last year. If anybody remembers, I saw that about ICE about this time last year, which is really unusual. But Chris Harris has a little bit of that in him. Avery being a point guard has a little bit of that in him. Marcus, just his presence physically has a little bit of that in him. Uh, but they've got a long way to go in terms of leadership. Uh, they have to learn how to do things at this level consistently first. And then once they learn that, they'll be able to help other guys. Right now, they're just, you know, they're trying to figure out how to help themselves a little bit first. Lindy's been able to put on quite a bit of good weight in the off season. What's, what's his transition been like? into his senior season and, and how's he going to be able to, to handle the workload? Yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed the, the mentality I've seen out of Lindy. I think Lindy uh, has a couple of goals in mind. I think he wants to be in a position where he can go be a professional basketball player a year from now. And, you know, who knows what that looks like. But when you start there, you know you'll have a focused young man because this is his last chance to prove that he's capable of doing that. But also, he feels a responsibility to this program. He's a kid from this state who wants to leave a legacy of success. You know, him and Thomas and Cam have been through a lot, and we don't necessarily have a ton of wins and losses or postseason success to show for it. Uh, so I think they're really excited about the opportunities to be the, the group that goes out saying, we really, really got to start again for Oklahoma State. What's it been like for you also to see um, Lindy's efforts putting on the basketball clinics for Native American youth across the state this summer? Yeah, for me, it just shows the type of person he is. I and mean, obviously, that's something that he doesn't have to do. Um, he could just stay here and hung out or just went home and spent the three or four weeks that he was away resting and recovering. But he, he, he has a kind heart. He, wants, he has a giving spirit. And so he wants to maybe lend a, um, a lift to some kids who maybe don't think they can do this be an example to them that you, know, you just got to work really hard and have people believe in you and things can work out if you if you truly believe in what you're going after. Having the mix you have on your roster this year, where do you feel like you guys, it's so early, but where do you kind of feel like you are at this point, this time maybe versus where you were a year ago? Um, it's, it's, I try not to get too far ahead. I mean, I feel right now that we have some quality depth if you ask me that on November 5th, the day before we play our first game, I may tell you we only have five guys we can play tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm excited. I think, we again, we have a good mixture of guys uh, who not only have the talent but have the right mindset. Uh, they've been really, really active this summer in terms of trying to transform their bodies. I think Avery's up eight pounds. I think Chris Harris is down like 17 pounds. Uh, so everybody's doing what they're supposed to do individually um, to be in position to help us. You know, if we have all these guys available and in position to, you know, game plan and, and, and help us win, then you know, I think that bodes well for our success over the next the course of the next season. How much is last season talked about in those trials and hardships that this team went through to maybe motivate? Is it even talked about at all with, with this team? I mean, I haven't talked about it once. Uh, it's a new group. I mean, it kind of be unfair to, for me to talk to the freshmen about that stuff. Um, we've just kind of wanted to turn the page and it, it's been great for me I think about it a lot uh, I reflect on the things that I've learned some of the things that I can be better at some of the ways that I can maybe communicate better uh, but I haven't really talked with the team about it because it, it's irrelevant at this point um, for the seniors who were on that last year's team and then for ice and for your um, it's something that they can kind of hold in their back pocket as when they see things maybe going south with the team or some dissension within the group they can say no we're not doing that this is what we're here to do. We're going to stay focused on our task and, and do what we're supposed to do. Coach, talk about what it felt like when you found out the news that you're going to be heading home to Brooklyn to play in the Barclays Center on November 27th. Um, I guess they just announced it. We kind of knew we were going to go there mm -hmm. for a while. I mean, I'm always excited about playing in that city and um, the energy and the, the passion for basketball that exists there. Um, but for us, it's, it's business too, right? It's, it's an opportunity to play high-level competition on a neutral site. 
Um, Syracuse is a great opponent. Grew up watching them. Can't believe Coach Beheim still there, right? <laughs> but he is, and I would guess they're going to play a little bit of zone that day. Be my <laughs> guess. <laughs> um, so it'll be an awesome experience for our guys uh, to see where we are early in the year. You alluded to Fiddy earlier. How did he get on your radar, and what goes into recruiting a kid from Europe? Uh, a lot. I mean, some phone calls, some film, which is a little bit of a challenge sometimes because you can't necessarily tell the competition level, what how great it is. Um, and so watching the film, I was intrigued by size. We needed a little bit more size. Um, but when he came to visit here, I think we took him to Hideaway like in the first three hours. And we ate like 8,000 calories of pizza. <laughs> and then we came over here in like 30 minutes. The schedule said that he was supposed to work out. So... Unfortunately, he had to put on some shorts and and he worked out and he shot like 90% from three. And I was like, we can't let that kid leave campus without <laughs> signing here. So I was pretty excited about just his abilities, really, really smart. Um, and so I look forward to seeing what he can do in terms of helping us from a versatility standpoint. Uh, he can give us a little bit more ways to defend, uh, but also other ways that we can attack on the offensive end. And then you brought Jonathan in as a grad transfer. What do you like about him? Just experience, his toughness. Uh, he's been through it a little bit. Uh, he'll be a guy that we expect to, again, understand how to prepare, help the young guys understand how to take care of their bodies, what it takes to, you know, go from playing on a, you know, Saturday on the road to playing a Monday at home, things like that that he may have experienced already, that some of the young guys just will be going through for the first time. Um, but also, he's really skilled. You know, he's got length. He's got versatility in terms of he can play inside and out. Um, shot 47% from three last year, which I like that number. <laughs> and we had two really good shooters, and neither one of them shot as good a percentage. So we got this thing going on. I guess we got like nine guys who think they're the best shooter on our team. Um, so I'm talking to them about I need to know who's the best maker on our team. I don't really care about shooters anymore. I want guys who make shots, not shoot them. So we'll see. Coach, how have the shooters responded to the new three point line rule being extended back? Oh, it's been fine. I mean, some of them. Right, so for like the freshman, this is, it was gonna be a new line anyway, right? And then for Thomas Azagwe, if you know anything about him, I don't know if he knows the line exists on the floor, he doesn't really shoot <laughs> close to it. Uh, and Lindy's gotten to a place where he's shooting them deeper, so I, I don't think it'll affect us that much. I feel good about uh, our ability to make shots from that distance and it'll be a big part of what we do. Do you think it might help a little more with Isaac's ability to get to the hole with the floor a little more spread out? Yeah, him, uh, Marcus, uh, pretty explosive downhill, getting into the paint. He's, got pretty good instincts on passing and then you know Avery's got you know going to have the floor open up, up a little bit more too so um try to play fast again and, and see kind of how it goes and use our depth to our advantage how are the guys adjusting to some new faces in the coaching staff it's been fine I mean it's um guys don't really think about that stuff that much uh coach Pastrana I've known for so long it was an easy transition um kind of built the same in terms of the way we work, uh, really aggressive recruiting, spent a lot of time here with the guys. So building those relationships hadn't taken long for him. Uh, Cannon hasn't been around quite as long. Um, but again, another guy who he's, you know, he works his tail off. He understands the game. So having played at a high level, he's kind of been able to gain some respectability pretty quick. Coach, last year, J.K. had like walked on. But what's it giving you guys this summer? It's an older guy that's, you know, out there always working hard. Oh, man. I mean, he may be the most in-shape kid on our roster. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I didn't go shirts and skins today because <laughs> I would have been embarrassed that one of those kids looks like that and he's just a welcome for us. I would have felt bad he's not on scholarship. <laughs> um, he works his tail off for me. He spent the entire four weeks period between the end of spring and summer continuing to work, spent a lot of time up here. And I mean, we have a lot of guys who spend a lot of time in the gym. I'm not sure very many spend more time in the gym than he does. So just the mentality, I think he feels a great appreciation for being here and having an opportunity to help our program. And, um, and we'll see. I, mean, you know, I don't mind playing anybody. So if he earns an opportunity to get on the court, then we'll see some minutes. People are going to say what they will about the Cannon hire. What did you see out of him? And do you kind of liken it to you getting hired as such a young head coach, as a young assistant? Yeah, I mean, I don't really think about age. I mean, kind of be kind of hypocritical of me to question somebody's age doing this job, right? Um, he's really, really good at his job. He's really smart. He's well connected in the area that's really important to us, has been for the duration of the history of our program. I mean, DFW, some of the players, I mean, you go through the list and think about the guys who've played here and the best teams we've had has been at least one, two, sometimes three or four guys that have been from that area. 
Uh, so have an opportunity to have a young guy who we expect to be around for a long time and help us build this program uh, who also knows the game and can help our guys get better really, really important for us. How important was it for you to keep Cooper on staff in some capacity? Oh, man, that was the most important part of the deal is, is finding a way to keep a guy who uh, I have as much respect for as anybody around to help me. Um, I'm still learning this coaching thing in a lot of ways. Uh, and Coach Cooper, who I've known since I was 17 years old, uh, somebody I trust implicitly. I mean, I would leave my children with him and not think about it. And so just making sure that, you know, there are no blurred lines. He has a great value to our staff. Um, he's somebody that's going to be an integral part of how we um, move forward in terms of game preparation. And, you know, on campus, he's a guy who can get along with anybody. So when families come on campus, he's certainly somebody that will be helping us close the deal on recruits too. You touched on it a little bit, but what about Kenneth's background? Do you think it will go well for your program with him coming in with a higher responsibility on your staff than maybe he was before in his playing experience? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have I have literally zero concerns about you know how the chemistry on our staff or um, how our players will respond to him. And he hadn't been here long, but he's been here long enough that I've been able to see him interact with everybody. You know, he's an easygoing guy. Um, he's not necessarily, a, um, he's not coming ahead trying to turn tables over and say he's in charge of anything because he still has to learn. He knows that. But he's, he's young. He's got great energy. He knows what a good player looks like. He was one himself. Uh, he knows how to help develop players. And uh, he has an eye for talent and can relate to people. And you know, I'm eager to see you know, his impact on our program you know, long term. I know there's a perception about the short term, but I'm talking long term. I think he's going to be a terrific coach. I think I know the answer. I'm going to get to this, but you have a scholarship left to give. Is that something you're actively trying to fill? Um, I mean, we're always recruiting, Marshall. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that there's an imminent thing here, um, but I mean, if I get a call in about an hour that says, hey, there's a kid available who can help you, I'm going to take it, and we're going to go try to see what's going on with it. Was uh, Pastrana, was he the link with Jonathan, both being from Florida? Or he knew him. Uh, he had he had a relationship with um, people who had coached him in high school and, and things of that nature. So, yeah, it made, a, made an easy transition for us to get involved there.